This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Andreas Sacred Seed Oils. We did an episode 458 with Stephen Heer from Synergistic Nutrition who provides these oils. And what's unique and somewhat amazing about these oils is that they are extracted and they are pressed using a proprietary unique technology, very, very low temperatures, which makes sure that the oxidation is eliminated. So what happens is that they're able to maintain their molecular integrity. And what happens is that the oils are able to deliver oxygen to the cell center of the cell, inside the cell. And so that has a cascading health effect. And if you want to learn more about these oils, you can watch the videos that are in our store and listen to episode 458, but they help to lower inflammation and deliver oxygen where it really, really needs it. It's an incredible, credible product. And if you're taking any oils right now, I would highly recommend upgrading to these sacred seed oils by Synergistic Nutrition. We're also brought to you by Savvy Rest Organic Beds. It took us years to finally find a company that we could start stand behind that offers fully organic products. And if you're sleeping right now, currently on any kind of normal conventional mattress, that mattress is off-gassing toxins and poisoned flame retardant chemicals into your breathing space all night long for eight hours. So I'd highly recommend upgrading your sleep space that you spend eight hours every single day, a third of your life in by checking out Savvy Rest Organic Beds. We're very, very proud to be working with this company, and I think that you're going to love their products. So check them out. If you want to check out the Savvy Rest Organic Beds or the Sacred Seed Oils, both are going to be available at extremehealthradio.com slash 496, and they're both available in our store as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, for joining us here. Happy 2017. It's been a while since we've been on the sh- on the air on the sh- on the show, but uh, thank you guys for joining us. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about today, so I'm really excited about this. This is episode 496. So if you want to join the show or listen or comment or anything like that, uh, listen to the show or uh, visit our sponsors, whatever you'd like, you can go to extremehealthradio.com. Slash 496. We have got so much to talk about today. Oh my gosh, there's been so much going on in the alternative health world, the alternative health community. A lot's been going on in our lives. We took about a week. We don't really take time off very often. So we took about a week and a half off, Kate and I did. Um, there's going to be another show tomorrow, Dr. Ed Group. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with Dr. Ed Group, uh, he's an amazing guy. He was on episode, let me take a look here really quick and see what episode he was on last. Let's see here. I think it was like 128, I think. He was on a long time ago. But he's got a great, great um, website over at globalhealingcenter.com. And we're connected up with him. So uh, you can connect uh, through our store if you'd like to go check out some of his products and the stuff that he's up to, globalhealingcenter.com. And you know what really cool thing, too, is this is what we're going to be doing now um, in the future here, is that we're going to be putting on our homepage. uh, If you go to our homepage now, it may change in the future, but... um, Right now, uh, there is a there is a YouTube video of Kate and I and our story of transformation on the front page of our website, extremehealthradio.com. And what we're going to be doing is um, just putting up the next guest that's going to be on the show. So even though our shows aren't live anymore, you can go and check, um, you know, who's going to be coming up. And if you have a question about your health or anything else going on in your life, um, you can always email me and put in the put in the uh, subject matter and the subject of your email to me, you know, something like question for upcoming guest or something like that. And what we'll do is we'll ask, uh, as long as you keep your questions short, because we can't obviously read big, long questions over the air uh, to our guests. But if you keep the questions short and just ask uh, a general question about your health, maybe we can answer it. So we'll do our best to read all your questions to our get- upcoming guests on the show. So I'm excited about that. Um, we'll go, maybe we'll do something like, uh, at the end of the show, we'll do a, um, you know, a rapid fire or maybe towards the end, we'll ask the guest all of the questions that we rack up. So stay tuned to our homepage to look out for upcoming guests on the show. Um, just want to do a quick recap in case you have missed any of the shows that we've done recently. Um, episode 495 was with Kate and myself. A lot of people have been emailing in. A lot of people have been asking, is Kate 
you know, what's up with Kate? Is she gone? Is she still here? Is she going to be on the show? Uh, she's going to be on the show right now. It sounds like once a week and we're going to be doing a free for all Friday show together. So, um, we'll be just talking about life and health and the things that we're into and all that kind of good stuff. And, um, you know, the progress we're making on our, on our own health journey. So stay tuned for that. Um, it's cool having her on. Um, I'm, and you know, you guys like it too. So many of you guys write in and, um, you know, it's kind of fun because we're, you know, married couple and we talk and, uh, it's, it's funny too, because so often, I don't know if something happens when you put a microphone in front of you, it's something changes. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's kind of, it's kind of weird how that works, but, um, it's not really, it's, it's, I, I think it's a skill to become comfortable, uh, with a microphone in front of you because something switches, something changes, but, um, I wish that we, we could record all of the conversations that we have, you know, driving around, going to the health food store or running errands or eating dinner. We have some really fun conversations. And so, uh, we try to capture some of that for the shows. Um, so Kate's going to be on once a week. Um, episode 494, if you guys didn't catch that one, that was with, uh, Mr. Raw model, Anthony Anderson. Uh, he doesn't like going by that name anymore, but he does model. He's a, pro- a professional model. So for you ladies that are, <laughs> inclined uh, we did a in uh, in studio interview with him he's a cool guy i like him a lot he's really really cool uh he's got a company called grow paradise and uh, you can learn all about growing food you can learn about how to garden and all of this you know amazing stuff that he's up to uh at grow paradise so he came in the studio the day before he left for hawaii and we talked about all kinds of cool stuff in in our studio. So you can watch that one on YouTube if you like. Um, we're trying going to try to do more shows on YouTube. It's challenging because a lot of the guests don't live here and um, don't live in Southern California. But uh, we're going to do our best to do some more shows on the uh, on YouTube, so you guys can enjoy those. <clears throat> and then episode four ninety three, Miriam Hennen. What's happening to all the bees? How bees are showing us that humanity is off track. So that was episode four ninety three. If you guys are interested in like bees and what's going on. Um, I think I researched before the show, is it two thirds of everything we eat um, is pollinated by bees? So if, if you wiped bees off the planet, um, it would be like two thirds of the food would be gone. Maybe it's one third. Regardless, it's a lot. And so she's got a really great documentary that she put together called The Vanishing of the Bees, <clears throat> which you can watch on Vimeo or you can go to her website, I think it's called honeycolony.com, but that was episode 493. And then 492, we had the great and the honorable <laughs> Dr. John Bergman. I love him. He's so cool. He's our chiropractor, and um, he came in studio for that one. And uh, that was right before New Year's. That was December 20th. And so uh, we talked about you know motivation, being motivated to stay on your health journey and, and that kind of thing for the new year. So um, the title of it was Motivation for How to Get Healthy and Stay Healthy When Your Friends and Family Aren't on Board. We talked about a bunch of other things, too. Um, he shared some really cool ideas about making a list. I think it was called something like um, 100 Things to Say, or to Do, Be, or Become, I think it was. And uh, he shared an exercise that goes along with that. Um, so, yeah, that was really good. I like that. Um you know, an exercise like that is an interesting thing because it really causes you to stretch your imagination. You know, it really causes you to, you know, um, after you get past six, seven, eight, ten things that you're interested in, you know, what else are you interested in? And something that I've been cultivating in my life for a long time is it's pretty easy to cultivate because it's kind of how I'm wired. But I'm I'm very fascinated about just about everything in life and how things work and why things are the way they are and how human potential is possible and what, you know, in the face of the way the societal construct is formulated and, and, and acted out upon in our life and, and how do we become greater versions of ourselves and why are, you know, why does the world work the way it is and looking into things and, you know, um, it's just, it's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. I, I'm just so curious about everything and kind of going back into that, you know, daring to be like a child and daring to have a mind of wonder and looking at things in unique and strange ways and different perspectives on things and trying to see other people's points of view on things and looking to see what's really going on. And I mean, this is something that could really, you know, take up a bulk of people's time is really just looking into things, you know, and trying to figure things out. And um, and so when you start becoming like a child in that way where everything is new, 
um, you know, it's interesting. You go outside, you go for a hike, and, you know, let's say you're uh, someone who is very averse in, you know, plants or something. And uh, so you walk outside, and you know the name of that flower, you know the name of that tree, you know, and then, you know, the name of that plant and all these things. But these are just names that we've given to these things. What about going outside and looking at something with fresh new perspective, without a definition, without a a formulation and, and um, predetermined opinion in your mind? Um, and so when you sort of strip away all of the programming that we have about everything and you start looking at things for what they are, not what the definitions of what, of what they are or why they are that way, or you know, you start looking at it just from a purely a purely childlike perspective. I think it um, starts to bring new color into your life. You know, it starts to really, at least for me, it does. You know, allows me to see things from new perspectives. And when you do that, um, life opens up opens up a little bit. And um, so, yeah, that was episode four ninety two. Doctor John Bergman, he was cool. Uh, and then episode four ninety one was Doctor Dean Bonley. That was an interesting show. We talked about magnetism, um, magnetism, and he's done, I think, about 27 years of research in magnetism and how um, the, what, what does he call it, diamagnetic or paramagnetic, what does he say, or uh, unilateral, I forget what he says, but um, he's a really interesting guy, and he talks about magnetism on your health, and um yeah, so he's he's fascinating, and I suspect there's something to magnetism and, and learning how to harness mag, magnets. Um, I think can really benefit health. Um, obviously, I'm not a scientist. I haven't done any research studies myself. I haven't done you know peer reviewed, double blind studies, and actually looked at human blood at the time that it's being exposed to magnetic um, frequencies or not. But something within me thinks that there's something to magnets. I really do. I don't know if they're as powerful as people say they are. I don't know if they are, if they have the ability to heal. You know, I suspect all these things that we talk about on our show and all these alternative healing modalities, um, I suspect that they help assist the immune system. You know, I, you know, the immune system, I, I consider it, I, I look at it like something like, um, like a tug of war. You know, how you have you know, a big group of people and you got, 20 people on on either side and there's a you know mud pit in the middle and you know it's always guys against girls or something like that and there's 20 people on each side but i feel like it's almost at a stalemate right and every time you do something that affects the stress of your body it's almost like adding something to one side and taking away somebody from the other side of that tug of war and so when you're doing that constantly it, it all of a sudden it becomes just an, a burden where one side can no longer hold on anymore. It's like a teeter totter. And, you know, in the analogy of the t- um, tug of war, um, I feel like, you know, something like magnetic therapy is like adding two or three people to one side of that tug of war. And the more things you add to one side, the more your immune system gets on top of your health. And, and you can't really say that, you know, one thing was, was the defining uh, modality that heal help help your body to heal, but you can say that all of them put together have made a big um, impact. So that was a cool that was a cool show. Episode four ninety one um, about magnetism with Dr. Dean Bonley. And then episode four ninety was with Marcus. I can't say his name. Freuden Freudenman Freudenman. Um, cool guy. I've recently I've known about him for a couple of years and um, been going back and forth with him trying to get him on the show. He's been busy. He's been traveling. He's from Germany. He goes all around the world talking about ozone and PEMF. And and um, what else does he talk about? He talks about, um, what do you call that? Hypothermia, which is like using sauna therapy and stuff. And so he's big on ozone, big on PEMF. And so we talked about all kinds of cool stuff related to ozone. And we primarily stuck to ozone for that show, episode 490. And it's really cool because he does such a good job of... Um, breaking everything down and he's got these really cool machines that you can get Um, and ours is going to be arriving really soon which I'm very excited about in fact it already has arrived Kate called me this morning and told me about it but it's a it's an ozone um, machine that you can I think it's an ozone generator and you could just buy a little tank of oxygen and that will last you for I think 10,000 is it 10,000 or 60,000 treatments 
So the benefits of of ozone um, is incredible. So go onto that page if you guys want to learn. Ozone therapy is, um, is is I think is really really a powerful. It's like adding five or ten people to one side of your of your tug of war match. You know, um, when you're killing off bacteria and um, and things that don't like oxygen in the body, it's it's a powerful thing. And so there's a ton of applications for it. And the cool thing about it too is. Uh, he does it um, through rectal ins- insulf. How do you say that? Insulf insulfation. <laughs> I can't say that word. Insulf insulfation. Um, <laughs> can't say that word. But anyway, he does it rectally, right? So uh, he says it takes less than five minutes every morning, and you do it for. It's a protocol. He's got a ton of different protocols, which is re- really cool. But uh, for this one, I think he was talking about five minutes every morning. Let's see, five days a week, Monday through Friday for, I think it's four weeks. And then you take a week and a half or two weeks off. And then you do a separate, you know, another protocol for whatever other health ailment you have. And I mean, who doesn't have five minutes in the morning, right? So um, talk about super quick, super easy, way, way easier than doing like a uh, coffee enema or something like that. So, which I'm going to get back into at the start of 2017, I'm going to start getting back into that. I used to do them once a week or multiple times a week, but I want to get back onto them every Sunday. I think I'm going to get back into coffee and enemas every Sunday. Then we had uh, uh, Fred Van Lu, episode 489. We talked about structured water, ozonated water, organized water for our health, healing, and longevity. So if you're interested in water, that was a cool show with Fred Van Lu that we did. Um, that was cool. I think it's really important to uh, to get a to get high quality water in your in your body, I've been drinking about let's see thirty three about a hundred ounces um, of water every morning. Now I get up, I drink a full mason jar full right when I get up. Um, I do a little urine therapy with that, and I just drink thirty three ounces, which is one mason jar full, and then I drink the other two uh, before bed. I usually finish the other two around five o'clock, which I need to have a sip right now actually. <sighs> And, um, yeah, so it's very important drinking enough water, even if you juice, even if you blend, do smoothies, teas, medicinal mushroom teas, like I've been doing lately, it's important to have water. Uh, then we had episode 488, Dr. Eric Zelinsky, the power of essential oils, which is really cool. Uh, he's doing some cool things. He doesn't sell essential oils by himself, but he, he's got a membership site where you can sign up and learn how to use essential oils and, and get protocols and get a whole download of what oils do what. So if you're interested in that, go to extremehealthradio.com slash 488. Then we had, let's see, episode 487, Dr. William Wong. He's a cool guy. I like him a lot. We um, He's from Texas. And we talked about balancing hormones, increasing libido, sexual strength, and uh, a lot more. So he was cool. Episode 487. I like Dr. Wong. He's cool. He's been on our show twice now. So that's what's been going on in our show. And let's see... Um, one quick note, I have this is day number three of my stand-up desk. I've had a stand-up desk for a couple of years now, and um, uh, the stand-up desk, if you're interested in the one that we have, it's uh, it's in our store, so you can check that out. Um, it's linked up in our store, but um, over the years, I've, I've had just a difficult time um, going up and down with the desk, so I'll go up and I'll go down, and um, when I'm down and I'm sitting, I tend to get lazy. <laughs> And I'll just sit for a while. So, um, but you know, I figure if I just stand all the time and do it all the time, um, it's uh, it's a lot better. But what I'm noticing though too is with the stand up desk. I don't know if you guys uh, are are noticing this too. If you do have a stand up desk, I'd highly recommend getting one. If you it's really really important to not sit as much as we do. Um, but I find that I'm way I'm very stiff when I when I stand a lot. So I'm having to. Anytime I do a phone call or um, I do something that doesn't require me to be at the computer, I'll, I'll stretch. Um, so every maybe couple hours or hour, I'll, I'll just do five or ten minutes of stretching just to just to move my body. And I'll go out and use the um, – we have this really cool thing in our store called the rapid release. Um, when I stand, I find that my back gets really tight, my lower back and my knees and my, um, and my heels. And so I'll go out there and I'll use this rapid release tool and do some stretching – for just about five minutes or so. And that really loosens things up and feels amazing. Um, the rapid release, if you're interested in that, is in our store. It's um, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool piece of equipment. I highly recommend it. It, it is 
something that I'm using. It's it's like one of our new tools that I, I use a lot, and uh, I use it every single day to uh, stimulate just different parts of my body, like my organs. And, you know, I'll do a full organ protocol before bed. Um, I use it for my face to help tighten facial muscles. I'll use it on my knees, like I just said, to help break down. Um, I don't know if it is doing this, but breaking down calcification in my joints. And um, so the rapid release is really awesome for that. But the stand-up desk is cool. It's really awesome. I would highly recommend. um, There is a lady. What is her name? We're working on getting her on the show. What is her name? She talks about sitting and standing a lot. I forget what her name is. Um, Hmm, it might come to me in just a second. Oh, yeah, Katie Bowman, K-A-T-Y Bowman. And you can look her up. We're working on getting her in the studio on the show. Um, But she's really, really kind of impacted my life in terms of um, how we use our bodies. And, um, And, you know, many of you guys have heard that you know, even if you work out a lot, which I do, I work out a lot. Um, I work out at least three days a week. Um, and, um, uh, very active guy. I do, do lots of things, hike, surf, all that kind of stuff. But no matter how much of that stuff you do, if you're sitting for, you know, eight hours a day, um, it's, it's almost as if that the sitting cancels out anything good that you're doing. So it's not that if you sit and you, you can get away with it by exercising. It's, it's the fact of, the way we use our bodies. And Katie Bowman talks a lot about that, which I'd highly recommend checking out her stuff. Just do a Google search, uh, Katie Bowman, K-A-T-Y-B-O-W-M-A-N, I think. Let me do that while we're have on the show here. Let me try to do that real quick. I want to make sure I get the name right for you, Katie Bowman. Move your DNA. Yeah, we're going to get her on the show. Alignedandwell.com and nutritiousmovement.com. You are how you move. NutritiousMovement.com. This is cool. Yeah, aligned and well. So, yeah, I'm really into this whole um, alignment, body posture, body mechanics, all of that good stuff. So, um, you may want to look at her her work. Um, we've got a lot of lot of stuff to get to. I got some documentaries I want to share with you. Um, I've got. I'm reading a new book right now. I, I read. I just finished a book. I want to tell you about, and I'm starting a new one. Um, I want to talk to you about New Year's resolutions since this is the beginning of 2017. Uh, we just did a, some recaps. I have a I have a news story. I want to talk to you about colonoscopies. I've got a bunch of different listener questions, um, some information on um, a membership site that we're starting. And um, before I get to any of that, though, I want to thank our latest uh, patrons, Robin White. Thank you so much. She is a personal friend of ours, which is awesome. Um, she's one of Kate's good friends, and Kate blogs about her often um, over at Kate. Stellman, K A T E S T E L L M A N, katestellman.com. And, uh, Kate started a new blog and she writes, uh, there almost, almost daily, pretty, pretty regularly about, you know, trials, tribulations, ups and downs, her spiritual journey, her journey of awakening, um, the things that she's learning, um, her insights that she has on different things in life and experiences that she's, um, had. And, uh, so go check out Kate's site if you're interested. Um, katestellman.com and uh, but yeah Robin White is a good friend of Kate's um, Kate met her oh gosh 15 20 years ago I think and they've been really good friends and uh, so thank you Robin for being a patron um, Patreon if you guys uh, are unfamiliar is a way for you guys to donate to the show and we could really use your donations I would be over the moon if um, if you decided to become a patron to the show um, as you know we do so many shows and uh it's challenging because the shows take a long time to produce, um, and it's just a, just a, a real challenge to put out as much content as we do. Um, and so a way for people to support the show, and so many of you guys are doing this now, which is awesome, is to set up a little Patreon account. And if you have Facebook, it takes you a couple seconds to do, and um, you can donate as, as little or as much as you want. Um, it comes out of your account once a month at the beginning. Uh, we have it set up right now where you can donate on a per podcast basis. So uh, we do about 12 shows a month right now, three a week. Um, so Robin just donated a dollar per show, which comes out to 12 bucks a month. But what you can do is um, you can say, you know what? I don't want to give any more than five bucks a month or two bucks a month or one dollar a month, uh, something like that. And you can just put, you know, one dollar and then put your monthly cap to one dollar as well. And that way you get you never get charged, you know, if we did like. 40 shows in a month, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get charged 40 bucks, you know? So, 
Um, thank you guys for your support on Patreon and man, you guys are awesome. So thank you. Um, and so thank you, Robin, for that. And I have another iTunes review that came in. I want to tell you guys about by M underscore C it says a fantastic show. It's helped me bring my health awareness to higher levels. Great interviews and a tremendous range of topics covered. You rock extreme, <laughs> extreme health radio. Thank you for that. And then, uh, ex- Let's see. Info dash user says, uh, what a rich, personable and insightful journey into modern health and advancement. Really enjoy feeling part of their journey to the limit in health. These guys are what's needed in medicine. Kudos. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, that review is, is, um, insightful to me because that's what we're going after is, uh, is sharing with, you guys, our journey of health and uh, letting you guys know that, you know, we're not perfect and none of us are perfect and we're all doing the best that we can. We all have struggles. We all have, you know, challenges in our life and, uh, and we do our best to bring empowering information to people. And, um, so when you guys leave a review on iTunes like that, it's really cool. Um, Kate four, 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 is that right? Says, I have learned so much from this podcast. Uh, so glad you guys are doing more episodes every week now, too. Thank you. Yeah, we do three shows a week. Um, and this is episode 496. We've been at this for a while since, uh, what is it? How long have we been at this? Let's see, August or, yeah, I think it was the end of August, beginning of September of 2012. Wow, that's crazy. Man, time goes fast, doesn't it? Ay, ay, ay. So we've done 496 shows so far. So pretty cool. Pretty exciting. Um, lots of good information out there. I was just telling Kate the other day, it's pretty cool. I feel such a, um, I feel such a, what's the right word? I feel such a sense of gratitude that uh, we have shows out there that people listen to, you know, tens of thousands of people uh, listen to our shows. Like we've, I think we've got 3 million views on just YouTube. And, um, you know, at any given time of the day, people are listening to our shows and hopefully gaining some insight and um, getting a new, fresh perspective on something from our show. And we get listeners from around the world that are listening. And it just feels cool. It feels really cool to know that, you know, there's good work out there. People are listening and people are changing their lives and and uh, really making a difference in people's lives. And so that's really, really what is, is, for me, it's it's gratifying to know that you know, we are out there helping people and people are, are being able to change their life and get on top of their health and gain some insight. And uh, so speaking of that, um, I wanted to, since, you know, we're, we're doing this show together and this show without Kate, I love having Kate on and it's a load of, it's a ton of fun, but I wanted to do this show today because it allows me to get a little bit more, um, I don't know, um, intimate with you guys and bounce things off of you. And so one of the things that I'm doing and working on behind the scenes, as you guys know, if you're a part of our um, email list, um, our community on, um, from our emails is that, uh, we are doing a, we're, we're creating a membership website. And so, um, we're working behind the scenes on that. And, you know, a lot of the things that we share on the show are very, I would say probably general, um, general might be the, the best term for that. Um, you know, there's a lot of theory, there's a lot of, um, sort of general ideas in, on the show. And, um, and so when we talk about like, let's say for example, uh, Dr. Jennifer Daniels, you know, we'll talk a lot, we'll, we'll cover the why questions and we'll talk about the theory and the research that someone's done. Um, and so we'll talk, let's say Jennifer Daniels, Dr. Jennifer Daniels, who does a whole, um, what does she do? She does the turpentine protocol. So, what she'll do is she'll use turpentine in a specific way in a specific kind of per- uh, turpentine um, and follows a specific protocol uh, to get rid of parasites and to get rid of, um, gosh, uh, all kinds of just critters in the body and, uh, and things like that and help cleanse the body, right? So we'll talk about why, how she discovered turpentine, what turpentine really is, what turpentine does inside the body. Um, we'll talk about her experience and how maybe she got, um, you know, or she left her medical practice because of finding these discoveries and, and how powerful turpentine is. We'll talk about, you know, her practice and how she helps people and all kinds of stuff like that. And then after, you know, 
an hour and a half of talking about that, the show's over, right? And so what's lacking sometimes in our shows are specific protocols. And, you know, how do I use the turpentine? How often do I use it? Um, do I eat before I take the turpentine or do I not? Um, do I combine it with the sugar cu- cube that she recommends? And if I don't want to combine it with the sugar cube, is there some other uh, delivery mechanism I could use with turpentine? Um, are there foods that I need to make sure that I avoid eating before and after taking turpentine? Is it is there a Herxheimer reaction? How do I, you know, can I see a video of putting it all together and, and you know, and, and, and how do I build a protocol that will help me in my specific health challenge, right? So a lot of these things we have uh, more deeper questions to and further, we need to know more. And so um, what I'm going to be doing and I am doing is I'm working behind the scenes on a membership site where we can actually add a little bit of practicality to um, a lot of the theory that we talk about on the show, because I think the, the the free show that we have here is really important. You know, it's important to understand um, why turpentine is so good. It's a, it's important to understand why ozone is so incredible. For example, uh, episode four ninety with Marcus, uh, or it's important to understand, you know, um, how the medical model works and all this kind of stuff is really important. But it's it's also really important too for the listener, for you guys, and for me who's asking the questions, okay, how do I put this into practice? What do I do? How, how often do I do it? Um, is it safe? Um, what do I need to avoid? Is there any other you know, ramifications? Does it counteract with other natural remedies? Can I do it while I do you know, other protocols and, and things like that? So um, we're going to be diving deeper into sort of more, the more practical how-to uh, protocol style information on a brand new membership website that we're going to be launching Um Sometime in 2017. I don't know when. Um, I'm very excited about it, though, because I want a place for myself. This is something that's, you know, something that's a bit selfish for me. I want a place where I can um, have access to information where, um, you know, let's say you're, you've got like a, a cold or a flu, or let's say you're dealing with like Lyme disease, or let's say you're dealing with um, parasites or something. And, you know, there's a lot of ways, right, to deal with these issues. Um, you know, you go online and you look at like the Dr. Holda Clark protocol for parasites, right? She uses these essential oils. Um, there's seven essential oils that you use um, according to her protocol, but that's one protocol, right? There's the Rife machine. There's, you could use, um, gosh, for parasites, you could use different herbs that aren't in her essential oils like black walnut and um, you can starve out the the parasites by eating certain things. You can try various parasite cleanses. You can there's all kinds of different energy medicine things too that you can do for parasites. And you know MMS. That's another thing you could use for parasites. I'm not advocating MMS, but people have used it for that. Um, there's so many different you know different strategies and protocols that people have used. What about using something like the biophoton analyzer um, or after, you know, let's say you have parasites, what test do you do afterwards to confirm they're gone, right? Or what lifestyle strategies can you make sure they don't come back? Like maybe you have dogs and you accidentally, um, you know, walk barefoot in your house and they and your dogs have parasites or you handle their raw food. Um, I don't know. So there's all kinds of, you know, things that you can do for parasites that, um, you know, that aren't really talked about in like a, just a blog article that you see on the online. Um, they're not going to talk about the IMRS 2000 or the Rife machine or energy medicine or homeopathy or essential oils or all of these different protocols that I feel like I, I, I go out there on the internet and I see certain things. Oh, another thing right here. I'm looking at it right now. My zapper, which I should put on right now. Um, this is the, what zapper is this? This is from Don Croft, worldwithoutparasites.com. And um, so I just put that on right now, just under my belly button. But there's all kinds of things we can do, right? So that's the point. And, and um, having a set of protocols that one could do, but realizing also that each person is different. Um, and so when it comes to dietary advice and dietary things, you know, we're all different. Some people may need a raw food diet. Some people may, may need a, pa- a paleo diet or a ketogenic diet. Um, or someone may need each of those things for different times or phases in their life, right? So there's all kinds of different things that you can do um, that you don't, you know, I, I see it online, but they're just sort of piecemeal. 
So I'm going to create a membership website where we can dive deep and have experts um, answer questions. And there's going to be a community forum in there. And it's a place where I want to go to say like, okay, let's say, you know, if something happens in our family where, you know, we have a health crisis or something, you know, what do we do? I want to be able to go into the membership site, go under that particular ailment and find all the information and answers. And so um, if you are listening to this and you like the sounds of that, I would be very much encouraged if you would email me and let me know that you think that that sounds great and let me know what you would think would be cool to have in a membership site. So what we're going to do is um, have monthly Q&A calls with uh, various experts and they're going to be taking your health questions. And the way we're going to set it up is that uh, we're going to take le- a listener questions once a month. This will be one of the things that we do. And in that period of time, we might ask them 10 questions, say, on all different health topics. Uh, we're going to make those available so you can listen to all you know 60 minutes of that particular call. And we're going to break each question up into its own particular ailment and alphabetize that in the website. So you can go under you know, conditions and go under like, you know, headaches and find, you know, all the different times that we've talked about headaches and the different people have talked about remedies for that. Um, and then we're going to be able to have a forum where we're going to be able to correspond with other people that are also in the membership and uh, talk about um, how they're dealing with certain things and what has worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. And, you know, I can see this going really, really far. I mean, eventually one day I'd like to have a place where we could meet up once a year, maybe have conferences. And um, I'm really excited about where this can go. And um, and I think that mainly, um, if you know, if you guys are, are interested in things that we should put in there, please let me know. Um, because, you know, I want to create something you guys like and I want to create something that you guys will benefit from and be encouraged to join and be excited about. Um, and I have a good feeling and a good grasp on the things I think people would like because I'm one of you. I'm, I'm in this world and I live this world. And, and, um, but with that said, um, there's lots of things I miss. Um, so if you have any other ideas about a membership site, um, let me know. I'd love to know about that. Okay. We've got a lot of stuff going on. What do we get to next? Okay. A couple documentaries I, I would recommend. Um, we recently purchased Netflix, uh, which has been really a lot of fun. And, um, um, so, a couple different documentaries I really like and enjoy on Netflix. One is called Blackfish, and that is available for free, for, uh, or not for free, but um, um, through the, what do you call that? It's the streaming part of it? You don't have to get the DVD. But Blackfish is a fascinating documentary about killer whales and SeaWorld and these ideas that um, people have that SeaWorld is some sort of place where, um, you know, the animals aren't harmed and... Um, you know, you learn about SeaWorld and what they do and how they get their animals and how they treat them. Uh, it's pretty, pretty eye-opening stuff. And uh, you'll rethink your ideas about zoos and SeaWorld and um, how we live and and um, sickness and disease. And, you know, one of the things that I, things I got out of that movie was um, it was fascinating to listen to all of the trainers who are now, you know, former trainers and they are no longer working for SeaWorld, but um, they would go back and they said they would cringe when they would watch old videotape of them talking to the crowds, talking about, you know, killer whales and and their and, and how they, you know, statistics about them and how they operate in the wild and how they operate in captivity and all these things. Because they're, they're just going and they're, and they're saying, you know what, I didn't know anything. I was, t- I was just told company sort of rhetoric. I was told these stats from the company and I just... I just, I just reiterated everything I was told and I just find that to be so fascinating because it's almost like an indictment on mankind in general, right? We go and we talk to our doctors, we talk to our religious people, or we talk to our our historians, or we talk to our, you know, people in, in government and power. And we just, we don't look into things and we just, um, reiterate everything that we're told. And so that was a really fascinating documentary. Uh, one, another documentary I watched just recently on uh, Netflix was, a really cool one called Captain Fantastic. It was um, re- uh, recommended to me by a good friend of mine who I've known for 30, 35 years. Good friend of mine. And um, he was telling me about it. And it's got v- Vigo, is it v- Vito Mor- Morgensen or Mortensen? I forget what his name is. Something like that. 
I'm not sure if it's based on a true story or not, but it's an interesting movie about raising children in today's modern culture. And it's fascinating because uh, the story starts out with them living. It's like a family of, gosh, four four kids and a wife. I won't give too much away, but basically um, the story is the struggle of this family who lives out in the wild and they teach their children. It's basically like unschooling. Uh, we did a really cool show about that actually with Dana Martin, uh, episode 85 about unschooling. And, um, this, this guy, the head of the family, the father, the husband, um, basically is teaching his children, um, how to live in the wild. So they're going on extreme adventures. They're hunting their own food. They're growing their own herbs. They're learning martial arts. They're learning how to make fire. They're learning how to forage and, and gather food in the wilderness and it's really, really fascinating how they're doing that. And they're just smart and they read and they study and they do all kinds of their, their lives are just so, um, dynamic. Um, at least it's portrayed so in the movie. And anyway, um, something, there's a crisis that happens and they're forced to sort of go back into modern quote normal world, which is the most abnormal society we could ever live in, which is modern Western society living disconnected from the land um, and disconnected from God and disconnected from spirituality and disconnected from the earth. Um, that's normal, you know, and we wonder why we're sick, right? We're wonder why we have disease. And so he has to go through this crisis, has to go back into the normal world. And there's a struggle that ensues where his children are potentially taken away from him because they don't see him as a fit father or parent. Um, and so it's just this fascinating story of risk and um, what you are willing to put yourself through in order to benefit the lives of your children. And is it possible to go too far? Is it possible to um, shun the normal world to the extent that you take it too far? Is that a possibility? So this is a really good movie. If you have Netflix, it's called Captain Fantastic. Um so I'd highly recommend checking that out if you can. It's a cool, cool movie. Um, let's see. What else do I have to get to? So much stuff. So many things going on here. Oh, I want to share with you a couple books. One of them I just finished reading and I would highly recommend you guys check out. It's called The Vision by Tom Brown. And if you follow our, uh, um, our feed on Instagram, you can check that out. And I usually typically put books uh, that we read or that at least I'm reading on Instagram. You can check those out. Um, but The Vision is a really cool book because um, I read it in early 2000 and it's a story of a man by the name of Tom Brown and he's a, just a child and his friend. And there are these white kids that live in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. And I'm not, th- I'm not sure how this happened, but through a set of circumstances, they ended up befriending a, an Indian uh, Stalking Wolf, I think his name was. His name Stalking Wolf, um, affectionately known as Grandfather. And this Indian um, and Tom Brown and his friend uh, all became friends. And uh, Tom Brown, it's a true story, and Tom Brown and his friend befriended the Indian and wanted to learn the ways of the wild and learn how to get back to the land. And so uh, he would go out for um, weeks on end on these adventures. Um, how his family let him do that at like 12 years old it's so crazy to me. I, I learn about these things. I read about them or I see videos about them. And I just think, wow, time was so different back then, wasn't it? It's almost like it was 100 years ago. I mean, today's world, if a parent allowed their kid to go out into the wilderness and live for a week or two or more with an Indian guy, a, a Native American Indian, I mean, I, it seems like today neighbors would call CPS on and have their kid taken away, wouldn't they? It's just, it's amazing how that is. Um, thank God that that happened because it's such a great book. And uh, the subtitle is it, uh, of the book is One Man's Journey to Spiritual Enlightenment. And it's an awesome book, man. It really, really goes into um, the vision quests, um, the importance of sweat lodges, um, marrying um, spirituality with uh, being connected to the earth, uh, survivalism, um, learning the philosophy of the ancient ways of, of, um, the ancient, 
um, Native American Indians, and this would probably you know hold true for any other any Native culture, Aborigines in Australia, and just whatever Native culture all around the world, is that these people live close to the land, and these people live for extraordinary amounts of time with robust health, connected, great eye vision, um, great health, vital, strong, um, and it's a completely different way of life than what we're living now. And I, I just found the book to be so good. It's such a good book. Highly recommend. I um, I put some quotes on it on our Instagram, and there's uh, you know he teaches him how to hunt, um, and he teaches. Um, it's just such a good book. It's such a good book. I'd highly recommend. It. It's called The Vision by Tom Brown. Tom Brown's written a bunch of bunch of other books. He's he's also got a wilderness survival school uh, somewhere back east, I think. Maybe back east or maybe in California. And I'm going to, I'm going to, um, to attend that one day because I want to learn about all that stuff. I want to learn how to make fire and forage and, uh, and all that stuff. Which, by the way, uh, Daniel Vitalis has a cool thing going on, a program right now. I think it's at, let me see, danielvitalis.com forward slash re. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Re. Rewild-101. So this is a journey into the heart of uh, rewilding, which is a, a new path book club. And um, so he's he's got a whole course on this, which is cool. So check that out. But uh, maybe Tom Brown would be something to look into as well. But Daniel Vitalis is cool. But uh, getting back into the cycle of life, I think, is so important for us. It's so, so important. Um, I just think that that's one of the things. Having spoken to Dr. Jack Cruz on our show, I don't know if you got a chance to hear that one. I think that was episode 460 or 466. You could just put uh, like extremehealthradio.com slash 466 or slash 460. I forget. Um, but Dr. Jack Cruz is a wealth of information. And uh, it, everything within science and everything within technology and everything within um, us learning more about the human genome and and all this is pointing to the fact that we really need to get back in touch with nature. We need to spend time grounded on the earth, breathing fresh air, absorbing the sunlight and vitamin D, um, and, and smiling and and being joyful and happy, being outside. I think that is I my you know after doing four hundred and six ninety six shows, and before I started this show, I don't know if you guys know, but I probably racked up 50,000 hours of study um, listening to other podcasts and shows and things like that about natural health. I was listening to two, three hours a day uh, for seven years or eight, nine years before I even started this show. And having gone through all that, my I think what's going to, what what I've come to and the conclusions I've been able to make um, is that w- we need to reconnect with nature. And it's like plugging in um, like, like a like a cord into a wall, you know, we need to recharge and we need to gain those um, negative ions and um, positive energy from the earth. And I really do think, you know, it sounds hokey, sounds woo woo, sounds new age and all that stuff. But, you know, I, I really think that is one of the biggest things we could ever do to improve our health and yes, diet and yes, all these things are, are great. But man, I think one of the main reasons we are so sick as a culture is that we're just disconnected from the earth. We're disconnected from the cycle of life. We've effectively sterilized our entire life from the emotional ups and downs of what it means to be human. The joy, the sorrow, the understanding of looking to the wisdom of our elders to being connected to the earth, to drinking fresh spring water coming up out of the ground, you know, absorbing sunlight, spending time having fun outside, I think is the best thing that we could ever do for our health. And um, and so anyway, I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but um, check out that book, Rewilding. I'm sorry, not Rewilding. Check out the course, Rewilding, from Daniel Vitalis, but also that's at danielvitalis.com, but also check out the book, uh, The Vision by Tom Brown. And someone was so kind, I should, I, I need to mention this because someone was so kind to us, uh, to send us like 10 books, uh, to our PO box. And if you have anything you would like to send to us, we welcome it. Um, and I, I really think that they, whoever this was, I posted this on our Instagram. We have no idea. If you're listening to this, thank you. 
Thank you for sending these books to us. Um, I had heard about the Anastasia series for years. Um, people that have read the books, it's kind of like a like a cult following. People are really, really into it, and uh, people are become sort of obsessed with the whole Anastasia series. But um, it's written by a guy named Vladimir Megre, a Russian dude. And um, basically, the story of Anastasia, um, I'm only, and this is based off of hearing about it for years, and only 70 or 90 pages into the first book. But from what I get from it so far, it's kind of similar to uh, the vision in terms of like, um, a, you know, the mentoring of someone who has a um, unique philosophical insight into how the world works from older to younger, like the vision. Or it's, it's similar to the book. I don't know if you've read this one called the, uh, gosh, what was it called? Oh, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. Uh, that was a good book I read a long time ago. Um, Soc- I think the old guy's name in that is Socrates. It's a good book. I forget who wrote that book, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And it's the same general idea of um, like an apprentice, a young apprentice learning um, different things about the world and gaining unique insights and spirituality and growth and things from someone older teaching them things. Uh, but so the the concept behind Anastasia was this guy, what is his name, Vladimir, uh, he goes out and um, he's going on an expedition uh, where he's got a bunch of boats somewhere in Russia, down a river, and he runs into these two old guys. And these two old guys tell him, hey, we need you to come out here and we need you to help us cut down these cedar trees. Um, and he says, uh, why did you say that to me? I'm, I'm busy. I've got things to do. And they start telling him the magic and the power of cedar trees and how powerful the nuts are, cedar nuts, the plants, the leaves, the bark, the roots, all of it. Um, and he starts going into how, or these old guys start going into um, the cedar tree and how it captures the energy of the universe. And they have these things called ringing cedars. When cedars become ready to impart their information that they've gathered from sort of the universe, um, the trees will actually ring. And that's how you know that it's time to cut them down and process them and, and start utilizing these things for your health. And so he thought they were a bit nuts. It was crazy. Who are these old guys? It comes to find out one of the guys is like 119 years old and his son was like 90 or something like that. Um, way older than he thought they were. He thought they were about 60 or 70. And, um, and so he kind of shrugs him off, and then a year later, uh, he has an accident and finds himself in the hospital with nothing to do other than recall this instance of meeting these two guys along the riverside, riverbanks in Russia, starts looking into cedar and the and everything that they claimed that the cedar tree would do, and it turns out everything that they said was true. Now, this is, no one knows, everyone pretty much assumes this is a fictional story. Um, I probably think it is, I don't know, um, but in any event... He goes and he goes back to that place in the hopes of finding these two guys who were telling him about the magical healing properties of cedar. And as he's pulling up his boat, he's standing on the shore, looking around, trying to find out if he could if he could locate these two guys again. And there's this woman who's standing on the shore of the lake, of the river. And of course, as with all men, women catch catch our eyes, right? So he was looked over and ended up walking up to her and asking her if she had heard about these two guys. And it turns out uh, these two guys were her dad and grandpa. And so he says to her, can you show me where they are? I've got a lot of questions. I want to find out some more information. And so she says, sure, come to my home. Come, you know, follow me, basically. And they hike for hours and hours and hours and hours into the middle of the forest. And it turns out that's where she lives. And then for three days straight, she shares with him all this information that she is somehow downloaded from the universe about everything from child rearing to planting seeds to medicinal um, medicinal plants and uh, unique outlook on nature, sexuality, religion, natural healing, gardening. And so I want to read to you a little little snippet here of page 77 of the first Anastasia book. And this is called Advice from Anastasia. And the subtitle is The Seed as a Physician. And he says, Anastasia stated, 
Every seed you plant contains within itself an enormous amount of information about the universe. So think about this, you guys, in terms of uh, starting a garden in your backyard, okay? Um, nothing made by human hands can compare with this information either in size or accuracy. Through the help of these, of these data, the seed knows the exact time down to the millisecond when it is to come alive to grow, what juices it is to take from Mother Earth, how to make use of it, the rays of the celestial bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars, what it is to grow into, what fruit to bring forth, and so on. These fruits are designed to sustain man's life more powerfully and effectively than any manufactured drugs of the present or future. These fruits are capable of counteracting and withstanding any disease of the human body. But to this end, the seed must know about the human condition. Okay, this part's important. So that during the maturation process, it can satiate its fruit with the right correlation of substances to heal a specific individual of his disease, if indeed he has it or is prone to it. Quote, in order for the seed of a cucumber, tomato, or any other plant grown in one's plot to have such information, the following steps are necessary. Before planting, put into your mouth one or more little seeds, hold them in your mouth under the tongue for at least nine minutes. Then place the seed between the palm of your hands and hold it there for about 30 seconds. During this time, it is important that you be standing barefoot on the spot of earth when you, are, when you will later be planting it. Open your hands and carefully raise the seed which you are holding into your mouth. Then blow on it lightly, warming it with your breath, and the wee little seed will know everything that is within you. Then you need, then you need to hold it with your hands open another 30 seconds, presenting the seed to the celestial bodies. And the seed will determine the moment of its awakening. The planets will help it and will give the sprouts the light and the light they need to produce fruit, especially for you. After that, you may plant the seed in the ground. In no case should you water it right off so as to wash away the saliva, which is now covering it, along with other information about you that the seed will take in. It can be watered three days after planting. The planting must be done on days appropriate to each vegetable. People already know this from the lunar calendar. In the absence of watering, a premature planting is not as harmful as overdue planting. It is not a good idea to pull up all the weeds growing in the vicinity of the sprouts. At least one of each kind should be left in its place. The weeds can be cut back. According to Anastasia, the seed is thus able to take in information about who the per- about about the person who plants it. Now, let me read that over again. According to Anastasia, the seed is thus able to take in information about the person who plants it, and then during the cultivation of its fruit, it will pick up from the universe and the earth the optimal blend of energies needed for given for a given man. The weeds should not be disposed of completely as they have their own appointed function. Some weeds serve to protect the plant from disease while others give su- supplemental information. During the cultivation time, it is vital to communicate with the plant at least once during its growth period. And it is desirable to approach it and touch it during the full moon. Anastasia maintains that the fruit cultivated from the seed in this manner and consumed by the individual who cultivates it is capable not only of curing him of any diseases of the flesh whatsoever, but also significantly retarding the aging process, rescuing him from from harmful habits, tremendously increasing his mental abilities and giving him a sense of inner peace. The fruit will have the most effective influence when consumed no later than three days after harvesting. And she goes on and on about, um, yeah, I won't read any more, but that was that was page 79 of the Anastasia book. But she goes on and on about um, also making sure that you're, you stand barefoot on the soil um, of, the, of the soil that you put on top of the seed because um, our feet exude toxins. Um, according to this book, and many of you guys have heard that, right? Like our our feet are are there's a lot of receptor sites, and um, you know our feet are v- very much prone to releasing toxins. At least that's what people say. So when our feet release toxins into the soil, and you put that soil onto the seed, it educates the seed as to what specifically what specific ailment your body has, and the seed will cultivate specific. Um, 
ratios of minerals in order to help that particular condition. Crazy stuff, right? So I don't know. Maybe you guys are, are listening to this thinking, what a bunch of craziness. That's not true. But, you know, I don't know if it's true or not. But I'm going to live as if it is. There's no scientific proof that any of that is true. You know? You would have to... I mean, that's so far beyond science. That's almost into the realm of spirituality and and stuff where you can't really make any claims about that because you can't do any sort of testing to find out if those claims are true. But if we live our lives based on science and science only, we're going to miss out on a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So um, imagine doing that with rock dust. You know, if you listen to the show we did with Anthony Anderson about growing food, you know, using rock dust, diluted ocean water, um, uh, what do you call that? Not manure, but um, mulch. And, uh, you know, there's ways of remineralizing the soils. And then you harvest your fruits that you grow in your backyard. And then you give thanks for them. I mean, talk about healing, right? Or better yet, put them through a juicer right away, fresh. And then juice that. I mean, talk about powerful, right? So this book, I would recommend it. Anastasia, good book. Vladimir Megre. I'm probably butchering his last name. Ringing Cedars. He's got about eight or nine other books too in this whole series. So I'm going to keep reading them until I get bored of them. But um, so far, I'm really into it. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, Nature, sexuality, religion. I'd be interested to see what she says about religion. Child rearing, gardening. Cool stuff. So there you go, Anastasia. Check that book out if you want. Um, and, and and of course, if you want to buy it through our Amazon link, uh, that would help support the show. Um, anytime you guys purchase through our Amazon link, that helps support us. Um, let's see, there was something else I was going to do too. Oh, I wanted to tell you also about um, New Year's resolutions or New Year's sort of themes that I have. Um, every year we sort of, we don't really make goals and stuff like that. We, I don't know. I'm, I've never been really drawn to that, but or resolutions, you know, it's something that like, you know, if I, if I, uh, you know, recently I, I took a, a couple of weeks off of working out cause I work out so much and, you know, and uh, I think every now and then your body needs a break. And so, um, you know, I took a, I took a break and, but I, I feel like, you know, making resolutions stuff, I don't know. I, I you, you know, you got to be motivated all year long and you got to stick to things that you want to stick to and be on the path that you want to be on. And, and so when you start making resolutions and I don't know, most people don't, don't stick to those resolutions. But one of the things that I do is that we sort of have these themes for the year. And, um, for me, the theme of 2017, what I want to do is just have more fun, have more fun and, um, cultivate myself more spiritually. Um, I've always been a really spiritual person. I've always been someone who, excuse me, always looked into the deeper things. And, you know, for about a five or maybe I'd say seven year period, I was very religious. Um, you know, I'm not as religious anymore at all. Um, but I'm very spiritual and, um, Christians hear that and they go crazy because they make fun of people who say I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Um, but anyway, you know, connecting to God and, cultivating spiritual practice and lately i've been doing more uh qigong uh, we have a great qigong course in our store that i i do i do the it's 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening i've been doing that um and that's been really helpful i i love you know the idea of moving meditation um i've been doing more meditation itself just regular sitting meditation been doing that more and uh and just you know just deciding to be someone, you know, picking the kind of person you want to be, you know, what kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be a happy person? Do you want to be someone who's always complaining? Um, I think one of the most rebellious acts we could ever do as humans is decide to be happy, decide to be what, what kind of being do you want to be on the planet? You know, like a joyous being, do you want to be someone who is happy and brings good energy to people and people want to be around because you're, you're always exuding this positivity you know, that's a rebellious thing because we get, all we get is the opposite, right? Negativity, you know, power's being taken from you. You have no choice. People are dying. The world's going to hell. Donald Trump's president or Hillary Clinton's president, you know, woe is me. All these bad things are going to happen. Um, but for 2017, I, my 
theme, I usually only have one theme per year and I focus on it as just a general idea. And this year I want to have more fun um, and cultivate my spirituality and cultivating the spirituality in the sense that, um, how do I put this? In the sense that, you know, it's cool to do these practices like I've been doing Qigong and, you know, meditation and um, yoga and things like that. And that's all cool and grounding myself and doing, you know, breathing exercises. And that's all great. And I think that's awesome. But I think what happens is that we do these practices, we put them on our to-do list and we kind of just do them every day as if you can check it off a list. And um, But... It's like in yoga, you know, the benefits of yoga happen when you're not on the mat, right? And the benefits of Qigong, the benefits of really going to church or anything, you know, become evident in your life at the time that you're not doing those things. And so um, taking my spiritual practice to a new level where I, I'm connected to God during my daily life, where I'm able to receive information and insight and living in this place of gratitude and looking at people and giving people the benefit of the doubt and not judging people and not being upset when things happen or losing control of of situations or stuff like that, you know? And so for me, I'm looking to cultivate that connection um, outside of the practices that I do more so the practices are fun and I love the practices to doing yoga and the, and the meditation, the Qigong and, and praying and things. Um, those are great and I love doing those. But one of the things that I, I want to do is carry that out more fully, um, to my daily life. And just, you know, when I'm in the kitchen putting together f- food or when I'm dealing with our dogs or when I'm talking to Kate or when I'm running errands or, anything like that, um, it's so easy to be a, just to be disconnected and be kind of in your own head and thinking about things and, and really just kind of not enjoying the moment and not, not being able to receive. Um, there's an interesting story of um, J.K. Rowling, the lady who um, came up with the book series Harry Potter. And she tells a story of, I think she was coming home from work one evening and she was on a long train ride and she's never been a writer, never been a creative person, as far as I know. Uh, and she's sitting there on a train ride, and the thought just came into her mind. You know, a young boy attends, goes to a wizard or wizard school, and um, from that develops, you know, opposition from friends and family, and meets, you know, people who can do extraordinary things. And then, boom, the characters, the plot line, the different scenarios, all got downloaded to her. Um, that wouldn't have happened if she was listening to an iPod, right? And for me, I'm obsessed with learning. I love learning new things. I love challenging my mind mentally. And I love getting into just things that I think will stretch my mind and help me grow as a person. But I think when I do that too much, I don't know about you, but if I'm constantly learning, it's a good thing, but I never get a chance to receive, right? And so... You know, if God's trying to teach us a lesson, if I'm constantly got earbuds in my ear, and I don't even listen to music on my iPod, by the way. I I, I just listen to podcasts, typically about alternative health, um, business, um, you know, um, alternative views of history, things like that. But I love learning about that kind of stuff, but personal growth, spirituality, all that stuff. But, you know, the more I have got information coming in from other sources other than God or my higher self, the less I'm able to receive that. And so, you know, that's one of the things that I am trying to take off my practice and take it out into the real world is being connected all the time and seeing the world more from a spiritual perspective. So that's one of the things I want to do in 2017. The other thing I want to do is just have more fun. Um, I work, I don't know about you guys. You guys are probably the same way. You work 50, 60 hour weeks. I just read something, uh, in 1978, the average work week was 39 hours. Now it's 47 average, uh, in the United States. 
And, um, you know, m- with many people, I think over 40% of people saying they, they work over 50 hours. And, you know, this show I do from home and I do everything. I do the scheduling of the guests. I do the social media. I do, you know, I connect with you guys on Facebook. I write the newsletters. I uh, produce the show. I edit the show. I edit the videos. I, um, you know, I, I go back and forth. I put products on the store. I write descriptions. I, I do everything. And I work probably, I mean, not to, I mean, I probably work maybe I'd say 60 hours a week, maybe 50, 60 hours a week at least. Um, and I love it and I really enjoy it actually. Um, but I work too much and, uh, I'm sure you guys think that too, um, about your own life. You know, I work too much and you know, I just want to have more fun. So some of the things I have written down for 2017 that I want to do. Uh, this year is I wanted to uh, take some herb walks. I want to go and find uh, someone locally and um, have them talk about herbs and take me on a on, on or take groups of people on a walk and just learn about herbs and learn about what's growing locally um, and foraging. Um, another thing I want to learn is archery. Um, I'm just fascinated by that. A long time ago, I read a book called. Uh, Early 2000s, I read a book. What was it called? Zen, Zen, Zen and the Art of Archery. That's what it was. I wanted to say Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert Persick, but this one is Zen and the Art of Archery. And um, ever since then, I've been fascinated by it. But I've just been too busy. That was like 15 years ago. I've just been too busy, um, or I haven't made the time for it. I should say. Um, some other things I want to do is learn chess and poker. I used to play poker years ago, but I've uh, just let that go. Um, I want to learn more uh, about those games and start playing on a regular basis. I want to do more yoga. Yoga is really fun. Um, I'm planning on getting a ping pong table. I love ping pong. Ping pong is my just one of my f- most favorite s- sort of games you can play at home. Um, I also like air hockey too, um, but we don't have room for air hockey table. Ping pong table we can put in the garage and play. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, what else do I want to do? Uh, working with herbs is more of a kind of a goal. I've been working a lot with reishi and shaga mushroom lately. Um, that's not necessarily as fun. Um, I enjoy it and I, I love working with herbs. I'm fascinated by herbs. I'm really excited to get more into making herbal infusions and stuff like that, but it's not one, it's not something I would consider to be fun. Um, but I have it here anyway. I put sort of this fun list together combined with sort of goals and things, but, um, I want to play more tennis. I used to love playing tennis as a kid. And up until recently, in 2005, let's see, no, 2008, uh, I injured my knee. I, I was, uh, at that time, I'd been doing jujitsu for about three years and I was helping a guy train for a competition and I tore my ACL. And that's why I had to stop doing jujitsu. And as a result of that, I never had surgery. I'd just been doing lots of alternative. I did prolotherapy and all kinds of different things. I documented that on our, and in some articles on Extreme Health Radio a while back. But, in any event, uh, I've been able to play tennis because it requires a lot of that side to side motion. And, um, but now my knee's getting pretty strong. And so I'm going to do some stem cells. I'm going to go over to Dr. Robert St- or, uh, David Steenblock. He's been on our show a couple times, um, and get some stem cell therapy. There's something called Regenikine that you can get. Uh, they're doing all kinds of cool things now, um, lately. Uh, if you follow us on, let's see, Facebook, uh, I share like anytime I come across cool videos, I share them on there of technology and health and stuff like that too. So, but I want to start playing some more tennis, uh, surfing. I used to surf way more than I surf than I've been surfing lately. So I'm going to buy a surfboard here coming up in the summer, um, and start surfing a lot more. I love surfing. Surfing is so fun, such a great sport. And it's so, um, it's a great sport because it doesn't require competition in the sense that you are beating other people. And it's this, this fight you're, kind of in a dance with nature. It's like being on a hike and listening to the sound of the wind blowing through the trees in the middle of nowhere and communicating with um, nature in that way. You're in a dance with nature and you're in a, in a constantly reminded of the cycles of the waves and the cyclical nature of the wave itself. And it's just awesome. It is such a great and empowering thing to ride on the energy of the earth on a board. It's amazing. Um, and I haven't been surfing as much as I would like, so I need to start surfing more. I really want to get into kickboxing and back into jujitsu. Those are things that I think are so fun 
And I have to figure out how to do that with my knee. Um, I want to learn how to box and do jujitsu. Jujitsu, I was getting, I was getting good, and that was so much fun. I love jujitsu. Um, jujitsu is for those that don't know. I mean, maybe you know about it, but it is probably the most strenuous sport I've ever done. But it's it's mental as well. It's like a chess with your body, and it's it's mental and physical. And it's cardio plus weight-bearing exercises because you're moving. You're constantly moving your body, so it's cardiovascular, but you're also trying to trying to move people off of you and you're, you're manipulating someone's weight and your weight. And so it's like lifting weights and running at the same time. But at the same time doing that physical stuff, it's like playing chess because you're trying to think two, three, four moves ahead and you realize what he's going to do and he's going to react to, the, to a certain move that you know and then you know he's going to react that way, so you set people up, and it's awesome. Jiu-Jitsu is amazing. Um, and another thing I want to do is rock climb. I want to start getting into rock climbing. I think there's something really cool about that. I'm really excited about getting into rock climbing, hopefully in 2017. Um, I want to go and do Tom Brown's survival school. I want to learn uh, outdoor survival skills. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, and the other thing I want to do is... Um, Ayahuasca and psychedelic plant medicines. I think that would be an amazing show we, uh, or experience. We did a show recently with, um, gosh, what was her name? Some more, somebody, I forget, recently. Um, and she's like a, a woman who's written some books about psychedelics and plant, sacred plant medicines and things and ayahuasca and, and connecting to that higher self of yours through these alchemical plants. Um, ayahuasca and ibogaine and these types of things and um, medicinal mushrooms and things. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I'm not saying that like, you know, my goal is to do these things, but um, my goal is to attract the amount of time and help on the show so that I could free up time uh, to be able to do some of these things. Um, And um, yeah, so those are some things that I want to do in 2017. Um, I'm curious about your list. Do you have a list of things? Do you put a theme on a year like we do? Uh, we do that a lot. We we put like just a theme. I don't really make goals and things. Just more I do like themes. So that's how we kind of do it um, in our sort of family and things. I wanted to share with you this article um, that I thought was interesting about colonoscopies. Um the title of the article is is called "If Your Doctor Tells You to Get a Colonoscopy, Just Say This." Um, so it says here that uh, 14 million people annually um, undergo this procedure called colonoscopies, uh, and 70,000 70, it says um, according to the uh, a report in the Annals of Internal Medicine, 70,000 or 0.5 percent will get injured or killed due to a complication related to the colonoscopy. Um, So this is an important point to consider because anytime you get, I think, over the age of 40 or 50, they tell you that regular colonoscopies are what every person needs to do, man or woman. Um, I have had one long before I knew what was going on. My insurance company required it as a result of, um, it was really weird. I forget why it, I was going. To, I was going to get a knee surgery for my torn ACL that I had that I told you about. And in order to get the knee surgery, they required a colonoscopy. It was so bizarre. I mean, talk about our medical industry is so out to lunch. I tell you. Um, and that was the last time I'll ever do one myself. But um, according to the Telemark Polyp Study One, this procedure increase or this procedure increases mortality by up to fifty seven percent. For every person saved by the procedure, 57 or 56 suffer an injury of some kind. It is scientifically proven that you can get effect, infected by Heliobacter pylori, Hepatitis B and C, Salmonella, Pseud- Pseudonomus, oh gosh, ir, irigo, irigo no C, <laughs> A-E-R-U-G-I-N-O-S-A, Irogenusa, Ganosa, Flu viruses, HPV, HIV, mycobacterium, tuberculosis, bacteria like E. coli, and more. Um, and as reported by the American Cancer Society up until 2009, quote, there are no pers- there are no prospective randomized controlled trials of screening colonoscopy for for the reduction in incidence or 
of mortality from colorectal cancer. Back in 2006, an article in the New York Times suggested that the patients in all the studies had at least one adenoma detected on colonoscopy but did not have cancer. So they developed cancer in the next few few years. But at the same time, the rate would, um, as expected in the general population, be without screening. There's yet another study published in the same year concluding that the patients in all the studies developed colon cancer, quote, at the same rate as would be expected in the general population without screening. In the next couple of years, even though all found polyps had been removed. So let's see here. One more sentence here. Is that right? Yep, one more sentence. Um, colonoscopy is a scam. Unfortunately, colonoscopy is nothing but a scam to make big pharma and doctors rich. Instead of serving as an effective and safe preventative measure, it's an invasive and potentially deadly procedure. Did you know that the radiation levels emitted from one colonoscopy are similar to that of the atomic bomb exposure in Hiroshima? As reported by the National Cancer Institute, quote, whether virtual colonoscopy can reduce the number of deaths from colorectal cancer is not yet known. Stay on the safe side. Consult your doctor about safer screening tests such as sigmoidoscopies, stool tests, and computed tomography colonoscopy. So maybe those are things you can type in uh, to the search engines if you've been recommended to get colonoscopy. He says here, sigmoidoscopy, stool tests, and computed tomograph- tomographic colon- colon- colonography. Wow. Uh, Dr. Massey, who's a friend of ours, also recommends doing uh, the hemocult test, which is you can basically send in for a test that you can get, uh, which will test for microscopic particles of blood in your stool. And it's a gross test, and you got to put your own poop on the slide. But this is what it's all about, right? Um, if you're going to take your health in your own hands, this is what's required. So don't be afraid to be, um, you know, working with your own bodily functions and bodily excretions, right? So um, the other thing I'd recommend too, if you want to learn more about colonoscopies, is a doctor we had on our show. He's not a doctor. Let's see. Take a look at his, what is his name? Let's do Extreme Health Radio, Constantine, Constantine Monostersky. How do you say that? Mono, I spelled it wrong. Let's see, mono, S-T-Y. Uh, let's see here. Huh. Let's try to find his name. What is this? Um, what is this? Let's see, I think it's... Oh, whoops. I don't, it looks like I don't have internet. Okay. I thought it was guthealth.com. It's not guthealth.com. Anyway, um, I think it's guthealth.com. It's not guthealth.com, but um, let me see. Constantine, sorry about this. Constantine. Yeah, it's not his name. His name is Constantine Monastersky. I'm not sure how you spell it. He's been on the show a couple of times, but he's got a whole um, whole website about. So search, search him if you can find out different variations of it. If you can find his name, type his name, Constantine Monastersky. Monastersky, I think his name is, um, and we've done two shows with him, and he's um, he's got whole articles about colonoscopies and fiber and um, oh, that's what it's called. Maybe it's called Fiber Menace. I think that's the name of his book. Let's see, Fiber Menace. Let's see, what is the name of him? Constantine. Gosh, his name is so hard to pronounce. So it's Constantine K O N S T A N T I N. Mana, M-O-N-A-S-T-Y-R-S-K-Y. So if I do Extreme Health Radio in Google Space, put his name in there. Okay, he was on episode 44 and 123. That's all you got to remember, 44 and 123. So if you want to listen to the shows we've done with him, just go to extremehealthradio.com slash 44 or slash 123. And you can learn more about him and what he has to say about colonoscopies and things like that. So... Um, there's the hemocult test. You can do a search for that as well as listen to those shows with Constantine um, on the show. So um, I think that's about it, guys. We are going to be back in full swing here pretty soon. This was episode 496. Um, we're going to be in back full swing with Kate on the show once a week doing a free-for-all Friday show along with 
uh, three shows a week. And we're going to be launching a membership site very soon. And we're very excited about that. So if you have some ideas or I would love to know your opinions about what you would like in a membership site because I want to create something you want. And I'm open to any and all opinions and ideas about how we can do this for you. So I want it to be something that you and I create together and something that you would be excited to join. It will be a monthly paid membership site, so it won't be for everybody. But for those that want to dig deeper and get real answers to their health questions, this is going to be the site uh, for you if you're interested in that. Um, And I would love to know your thoughts about how to to do it and what to include and things like that. Um, I'd really love to know what what you would want Um, because that's really ultimately what it's all about. What do you guys want and how can we help you? How can we serve you? And work together and create an awesome, awesome, awesome community that hopefully we can do conferences and um, meet up once a year. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? To get together and talk about ideas and and uh, learn from each other and grow. Be surrounded by like-minded people doing fun things. That would be a lot of fun. Um, so let me know. Let me know what you think about that, um, about the memberships w- website. Stay tuned to, to the, our, our homepage too. We will be putting on there uh, the next guest who's going to be on. And so if you have questions, send me an email and put in the subject um, question four and then the guest name. And then I'll, uh, I'll separate those and we'll make sure to ask every guest your questions. And that would be something that I think would help a lot of people. Um, Let's see. Yeah, so don't forget to check out those documentaries, Blackfish, Captain Fantastic, and the two books that I read. Um, the Vision by Tom Brown and Anastasia. If you buy them on Amazon, make sure to go through our link. We would appreciate that. That would help support the show. Uh, thank you for your iTunes reviews. Thank you, Robin, for uh, your latest uh, donation on Patreon. And thank you thank you guys for your support and uh, buying through our store and looking on our store before you buy anything online. That really, really is helpful. And we have some cool stuff on our store, man. We've got like rebounders, saunas, Blenders, juicers. Um, let's see, we got everything here. Let's see. I'm going to the store right now and taking a look. Um, oh, we've got the magnetic sleeping um, sleeping bed on there, which is really cool. Um, the one from Dr. Dean Bonley. We've got the Scalar Energy Rest Shield, which helps to um, mitigate electromagnetic field radiation and uses scalar energy. Um, this is a cool little pyramid pyramid type device that you plug into the wall and you can put it next to your bed. And um, according to Ken, it helps pr- um, really, really get you into that deep REM sleep. Then we've got the uh, Soul CBD oils. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about these things, um, but Soul CBD is um, a company that a friend of ours, Larry Ostrowski, I've known him about him um, for many, many years um, back when he was doing other businesses. And I was following him back then and then uh, got a chance to hang out with him a couple years ago and uh, talk to him about what he's doing with Soul CBD. They're doing some cool stuff, man. Um, talk about some powerful CBD um, oils. And I would recommend getting some if you can because I don't know. There was just rumors going around. I'm not sure if this is true that the FDA is now trying to classify CBD the non-psychoactive part of the cannabis plant as a, uh, a stage one or a level one, class one, I forget, drug, which is in the same class as like heroin and things like that. So if they're able to do that, now CBD is going to be gone. So I don't know. Um, I'd recommend getting stocking up um, personally. So you can get those on our store. Um, the Andreas seed oils, which are an amazing seed oil proprietary technology that they've just developed been working on it for 20 years i think of extracting oil without oxidizing the molecule and in a cold process type way and what this is able to do is to do, to deliver oxygen to the center of the cell um and that is incredibly powerful and when you understand about that and they have got sunflower black cumin lots of studies uh, on black cumin oil and cancer that's some cool stuff. And then we've got the uh, Savvy Rest Organic Beds, which I would highly recommend um, looking into getting an organic bed. And then we've got Earthing um, Bed Sheets, which is what we use. Um, 
They've got we've got the Defender EMF pad. So if you have a laptop, you want to um, protect yourself from EMF. Um, look into our store at the EMF Defender pad. Um, our store, what we're doing is putting a bunch of videos in there. So it's an educational site as well. So you can go into any of the products and watch videos about the products too. So it's a place where you can learn a lot too, which is, um, I think pretty cool. Uh, obviously we've got the rapid release pro two in there. Um, we've got the beta, uh, beta glucans, one, three D glucans from better way health, uh, which I think are putting out the most unique and powerful proprietary blend of the immune system beneficial, um, components of medicinal mushrooms, which is the beta glucans. Um, so check those out. And we've got, um, chemical free cookware, grounded shoes, the minimalist earthing sandals. Those are cool too. And then we've got the products from activation products, which is the, um, the magnesium and the oceans alive. Um, really powerful stuff. And we've got Morocco method hair care products. We've got the biomat. Biomat's a really cool thing. We use that every single day. Um, far infrared technology in a mat using uh, crystals, uh, amethyst and tourmaline crystals. So great for yoga, great for reading, great for meditation, just sitting and spending time on this mat. You, you put the mat in your car, plug it in, and uh, you can sleep on it. You can drive with it. You can sit on it on your chair. It's cool. It's really cool. Um, we love it. And uh, we've got the Barf World Raw Dog Food. We've got all kinds of stuff. So check out our store. Um, um, like just scrolling through Austin Air Purifiers. We've got the Excalibur Dehydrator. We've got the Bellicon Rebounder. Cool stuff from um, Onnit.com. All of their products. O-N-N-I-T. Um, they're doing some cool stuff with kettlebells. They've got some great fitness equipment that we use. Um, they've got the Relax Far Infrared Sauna. Everything from Sir Thrival, the One World Way. You know, something cool that um, I don't talk about much is this Squatty Potty. I don't know if you guys have seen this. or the It's a tool that you can put below your um, your toilet, and it helps to um, – basically, it, it, it helps to put your body in a squatting position, which is much more natural um, in order to go to the bathroom. And so it helps to your uh, – your lower colon to unkink. And so um, when you go to the bathroom, you don't have to strain and sit there and push and all that kind of weird stuff. So squatty potties, we have them at our house. Um, cool stuff. So anyway, thank you guys. We love you. This is 2017. We're excited about everything that is going to be coming down the pipe for you here on our show. Uh, your support means the world to us. We're just so grateful. And um, I don't know, just feel so blessed to be able to do this work and to be able to help you and help people uh, get better, get healthier, and all that kind of stuff. So um, we're really excited, and uh, and and that's what we're doing this for, is to help as many people as we possibly can. Our goal is to help a billion people. That's B with a billion. So that is a lot of people, and so that is our goal. Um, you have to have big goals, right? So um, that's our goal, is to help a billion people. So when you purchase through our store or when you leave us iTunes reviews or share our shows on Facebook or, you know, donate to our show on a monthly basis or whatever support you do helps us to uh, reach our goals. So we thank you for that. Um, if there's ever anything we can do for you, please let us know. We'd love to help as many people as we possibly can. We love you guys. Um, and I think that's about it. Stay tuned for shows. Let me do a little, uh, let's see a little, teaser for what's coming up uh, tomorrow uh, Dr. Ed Group's going to be on the show but by the time this gets published um, Dr. Ed Group will have already been on the show uh, but we've got let's see Cindy Felicia the cancer rev oh no no that's going to be Dr. Aaron or Dr. Keneally that's right um, the cancer revolution book so we're going to be talking to, to Dr. Aaron Keneally about that that'll be fun um, and then we've got Susan Lucas, PhD, some pop uh, talk about Lyme disease, parasites, dental infections, healing leaky gut, methylation, chelation, social and emotional aspects of healing, and more. So we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up. So make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. We appreciate that. And that way you'll be kept up to date with anything that we have going on. Uh, the best way, if you want to keep up to date with everything we have going on, is joining our newsletter, our community there. Because that way, when people are... Sign up on Facebook. Uh, oftentimes, you don't see everything we post because in order to see everything, you have to you know, tick a box that says see first, and a lot of people forget to do that. So um, t 
To stay up to date with all of our shows, we send emails twice a week on Mondays and Fridays. Um, sometimes we miss a day or something like that, but typically Mondays and Fridays. Uh, that way you'll be kept abreast of all of our shows and all the different free summits that go along um, that happen every year. We tell you about different uh, products that are on sale, discounts that are happening, um, upcoming shows, all kinds of cool stuff going on in our newsletter. So stay tuned for that on Mondays and Fridays. Uh, if you want to sign up to that, the best way to do it is just to text the word get healthy to 33444. Uh, that is all one word, get healthy. And then you text that to 33444 and then confirm your your um, name and email and you'll be off and running. So we appreciate that. All right, guys. Love you. Time for us to go. I got to do my rebounder, my sauna right now uh, before Kate gets home. Um, and um, maybe take the dogs for a walk too if it's not raining anymore. So we'll do that. Yeah, so we love you and let us know if we can ever help and we'll catch you guys on the next show. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition.